The video you're about to watch was originally broadcast live in February of 2017. It's the story of how I transitioned from shooting full frame to micro four thirds. Now, because it was a live broadcast, it was of course a bit long and rambly. And while it may have been the most popular video on my channel for quite some time, there are understandably quite a few comments asking me to get to the point. So I've decided to re-edit and re-release this video, but just the good parts so I can get to the point. Now be sure to stick around to the end of the video where I'll provide an update on where things are today. Now this is a really good story because this, this is the story of how I switched to Micro Four Thirds for essentially all of my work. So my first Micro Four Thirds camera was an Olympus. A friend of mine who is a bit of a camera collector had mailed me, shipped me a bunch of cameras to play with. It's good to have friends like this. Uh, there was a Leica S3, the big medium format Leica DSLR shaped camera. There was a Fuji, I have no idea what model number in the bag. Um, and there was an Olympus OMD one or five or whatever was the current model at that time. So I'm playing with the Leica and the Fuji and, um, and my buddy calls me and says, Hey, have you played with the Olympus yet? And I said, no, no, I'm probably not going to. He goes, why not? Well, yeah, I'm a full frame snob, you know, I, no, you know, I, I like big sensors. He goes, try it, dude, you got to work with it. Fine. All right. You shipped it to me. I may as well try it out. So I tried it out. And I remember specifically one night at home doing some photos, really low light and looking at the picture going, well, it actually focused like instantly, which my Canon wouldn't do with that kind of light. And the shot was great. Oh, well, this is, it's kind of cool. All right. So I'm going to give this a bit more try. So I played with it more and more and more and I fell in love with the format. So I bought my own, uh, bought a body and a couple lenses. And I know I shot an event anniversary party or something like this. And so I thought, you know, I'm going to shoot with that instead of the big Canon because nice, small, lightweight, unobtrusive. And one of the things I really liked was the articulating LCD and the OMD had one that flipped out. And that was really cool. Go waist level, get over your head, that kind of thing. Certainly the 16 megapixel size was not a problem. You know, they're going to do books out of this and social media stuff. So, you know, the resolution is definitely not a problem. So I thought, you know, this is an okay one to try it out with. So I did that. I thought, okay, I'm going to do a commercial shoot, a very low budget local clothing store. Hey, can you do some pictures for us? And you know, whenever it is low budget and you agree to do it, your objective is to get this in and out the door as quickly as possible. So I thought, okay, here's what I'll do. I'm going to shoot the pictures with the Olympus. I will then Wi-Fi those over to my iPhone or iPad. I don't remember at the time what it was. And I'm going to process them in Snapseed or something like that. Give them a vintage look as a vintage clothing store with some vintage photos and deliver them like from the car, right? Before I even drive away. This is a commercial test. Vintage clothing store, just simple little photos of their clothing. Shot these, walked out, sat down in my car, imported it, and off I went. So this is very Instagram-y, you know, processed kind of look to it. And that's fine. This is what they wanted. Okay, so that worked out really well, right? So then came the real test, a proper commercial job for these guys. A friend of mine, who does a lot of work for Mercedes called me and said, Hey, we're doing this social media project in the United States. We're going to be shooting in New York and in LA. Basically Mercedes is delivering us a bunch of cars in each city. We're going to take these cars, drive them around, take cool pictures of them, post them on the social media account. And you're thinking, I'm going to get paid for this. Cool. Sounds like fun, right? It's the kind of thing you'd do anyway. So I'm thinking this is the perfect real commercial test for this camera. One of the first things I did was I set the camera to shoot square. I'm always shooting raw plus JPEG on these because I, I want to get that JPEG that's easy to transfer. And you know now you can transfer the photo, raw photo, and actually edit the raw file. But back then you absolutely couldn't do that on your iOS device. Had to be the JPEG. So shooting raw plus JPEG, get that JPEG into the camera via Wi-Fi. And I was shooting square so that we knew we were going to Instagram square. This is before Instagram did non-square. So I could see on the LCD preview on the camera, the square image. So I knew exactly how it was going to be cropped. So there was no shoot wide and, you know, thinking you're going to crop square and then you go to crop and go, oh God, I should have, no, oh, didn't, I can't quite get it. No, I'm just shooting square. So yeah, that was cool. I could dial in a look in the camera. So I dialed in a little bit of a look, but for the most part, I wanted to be able to do the processing in you know, God knows what tools at the time, Snapseed and whatever other tools I had. Obviously, we're posting to Instagram here. It's not like we're doing big, huge billboards. So resolution, clearly not an issue. This became an issue of convenience, being able to transfer the photos and, um, and do that you know, right away in the field to be able to shoot square, get that square aspect ratio while I was shooting. And, um, and just the, the general lightweight ease of use of using the cameras. But this photo in particular was one that really kind of did it for me. So here, let me go ahead and pull this picture up. We had a, a local contact in LA and I'm asking, and he's, you know, in the film industry, he shoots all the time in LA. I said, hey, is there a spot where I can shoot this car top down, where I can get above it and shoot straight down? He goes, yes, I know the spot. So, all right, so we go out there and we're doing this in the middle of the night, so there's no traffic. So 
guy pulls in the car underneath for me and I go up on top. Now, I've got this, imagine that my desk is a, is a wall. You know, obviously you get a wall so you don't fall in the hole. And so I'm thinking you know, I can just lean over the wall. Well, unfortunately it wasn't quite that easy because there's the big wall, but then there was a platform beyond that before the hole. So basically if someone dropped something or stepped over the wall, whatever, they wouldn't just go straight down. There was another gap. So now I got to climb over this wall and stand on this platform <laughs> and uh, to get this shot. But I can't, I can go up to the edge and shoot down, but the thing is really, really thick. So now imagine you're standing on this wall, super thick concrete that you're standing on. So if you put your camera at the edge of that, what's going to be in the shot? You're going to have this huge wall looking down. So I got to get the camera way out. Well, I didn't have a pole or anything to hold it out there. So all I can do is hold the camera out like this. So I remember, flip up that LCD again. Nobody else's camera back then had the flip up LCD. I know this is a lot more common now, but nobody else on the shoot had one of these. Flip up that LCD. I'm holding the camera out as far as I can. I've got a backpack on that's attached, cinched, and I've got guys behind me holding onto my backpack to hold me so I don't fall down the hole. <laughs> Insane. So I'm doing this, I'm holding the camera out and leaning out, leaning in and leaning out, and I'm able to, because I can see the LCD, I can see the picture, I'm able to adjust the angle of the camera and I don't remember on a radio or phone, probably on a phone call to the driver, say, okay, pull the car a little bit forward, backward, turn it, whatever, um, and get the shot set up exactly the way that I want it. On this one, I mounted the camera onto the front of this Mercedes and drove all over doing, um, slow shutter speed stuff. I have this suction mount that I bought specifically for this, suction this thing onto the car and then mount my very lightweight Micro Four Thirds camera onto that. You know, you see these suction mounts that have three suctions on them and you can put big old camera rigs. I'm just using a little one. The camera's well under the weight limit of the thing, suction mount this thing onto the hood of the car. And you're driving around a $150,000 brand new Mercedes in the streets of New York with a camera suction cupped onto the hood of the car. You kind of don't want the camera to fall off. That'd be bad. But I had absolute total confidence in this rig. I had it set up on a wired trigger and I was just driving around and just pushing the button over and over again. Then I stop, look at the pictures, adjust the shutter speed, trying to get that exact, you know, get the right shutter speed so I could get this shot. And this is exactly what I wanted. Wanted this view where you got the star that's sharp and then the blurry road behind it. Uh, and then, you know, the yellow taxis for New York were kind of a, a requirement. So I managed to get those in there. So that's the kind of thing that I did with my first commercial shoot, first real commercial shoot with the Micro Four Thirds. And it has been uphill ever since. So where does that bring us today? Well, I'm still shooting Micro Four Thirds. In fact, most of the videos you see on this channel, including this one here, are being shot on Lumix Micro Four Thirds cameras. I am still a Panasonic Lumix ambassador, which means I'm also shooting with the Lumix S series, like the S1H, which are full frame. So I've kind of come full circle. I'm shooting both Micro Four Thirds and full frame. But the Micro Four Thirds story is far from over. Be sure to subscribe to this channel to see what happens next.